is the same data, the distributions for the message rates, only on log scales, and this is every individual uh, observed message rate for the humans and then the, the chatbots. And you can see the bulk of the data for the humans between about 5 and 50 uh, words per minute. And for the chatbots, it's just a huge range. If you look at the, the median message rate for each individual communicator, um, we see the bots falling clearly, or the humans falling clearly to find pattern here. And uh, again, the bots are outside of the normal human range. If we look at the uh, complexity as, we, as measured by entropy and entropy rate, we find uh, large differences between humans and bots uh, in terms of complexity. So humans are exhibiting more complex uh, intermessage delay time patterns, message size patterns, and uh, message rate patterns. Um, for the, those of you that aren't familiar with entropy, essentially what I'm measuring here is the variety or the, the inverse of the redundancy. So if, I, if they have a high entropy of intermessage delays, it means that there wasn't a lot of predictability in, in their timing. It was a whole lot of variety in, in, in how they answered and responded. In terms of entropy rate, the difference between entropy and entropy rate is this doesn't depend on order, but entropy rate depends on the order of the numbers or, or whatever it is you're measuring, the sequential order of it. So we find, again, a very large difference between humans and bots on uh, all these complexity measures. <clears throat> so the best measures we found were the uh, messaging rates, the, the typing speeds, and the intermessage delay times, uh, but, but not so much the message sizes, which uh, only kurtosis was a possible distinguishing metric. The problem, as you pointed out, was that these are potentially easy to program into a bot uh, or to fake fake these signals. Uh, so potential solutions would be uh, using things like message sizes, because those are potentially harder to fake. Um, when, you're, when you're talking to a bot and the bot comes up with an answer it thinks is uh, appropriate for the situation, it then would have to modify its answer potentially in order to fit into uh, the potential message size distribution that we would call human. Um, but that would limit the potential responses of the bot. So that uh, possibly could be a limiting factor and would be a useful statistic to keep track of. Um, if we use more complex measures, that would be harder to take. We think uh, entropy, entropy rate, and other higher order complexity measures uh, would be a lot harder to fake than simple you know, means of standard deviations. And there's potentially other ways we could detect bots that we haven't looked into or are considering. Things like keystroke dynamics and uh, the, the lender data is actually would be great for that because a lot of the transcripts have the keystroke information. So we could look at that. Um, look at the particular typing errors that humans make versus the ones that bots seem to make. Um, we could look at language analysis. Um, I don't know much about language analysis, but uh, there's potentially a wealth of information there that could be considered in terms of uh, how people are structuring their language <coughs> when communicating. And uh, another measure of entropy, instead of looking at the entropy of uh, the measures, the numbers, um, we could look at the words themselves and what kind of entropy they're displaying. So for some follow-up research, we're definitely going to have to look at different and larger data sets besides the Lebner price set. Uh, the nice thing about that data set is we know the ground truth. We know who's a bot and who's a, who's a human. So um, that makes it easy for us as researchers to be able to, to tell um, who's who. Um, but we would like to expand also to other forms of computer-mediated communication, like uh, Twitter texting and chat rooms, uh, to see if these measures hold up in other communication media. Um, another interesting question, potentially, is uh, if we had a, a good set of chatbot metrics, chatbot detection metrics, 
um, that we could use, we think we could use, how many samples would it take? So how long would I have to talk to a bot before I had any kind of uh, degree of certainty whether it was a, a human or a bot? I think that would be an interesting question that uh, hasn't been looked at. Um, potentially, from this work, we could develop um, relatively simplistic models at this point of uh, humanness or botanists, conversely. And uh, this could be used potentially by developers like yourselves who want to make a bot appear more human. Uh, this could be fed into an objective chatbot quality uh, metric set. Um, some potential ideas that uh, we discussed a little bit in that uh, our group's been talking about our potential human-like behavioral metrics, um, quantitative metrics primarily, but you could also have conversational metrics like length and pace. And uh, obviously, we would want to garner some kind of user quality rating system, either by the users themselves or by uh, hand scoring conversations of afterwards. You guys have any questions? I'm kind of going through a lot of the numbers real quick, but any questions? Yeah. So, you're working on being able to quantify um, and determine what's a bot and what's a human. Are you working on, I guess, if you can quantify it, if you can make a, a bot to the root out other bots? And yeah, that's exactly that, right. Yeah. Is that the, an area that you guys are getting into or interested in? That is an area we're interested in. You know, for so a bot that would yeah. some kind of automated bot detection. System. Right, because I mean, yeah. for a security one, if you want to like an employee right. on Yahoo, you can't have people there 24 hours a day in every single chat room just doing that. It will, you can, but right, right. So it, would, it could be an automated detection system either for um, yeah, an administrator um, of the chat room or users themselves if they if they want to have some level of security. You could do a metrics that's spent to each individual user. For security purposes, yeah. What about looking at the URLs themselves? Would that be? I know you can't do that with Loebner data, but uh, you know, if you're looking for bots that are trying to get people to click on things, mm -hmm. you just look for those things. Uh, yeah, you certainly could, and, and I would think that would be one good way of, of combating that. Uh, in terms of. I think that would be easy to spot in the chat rooms where they're not really trying to pretend like they're human for very long. They, they just say hello, and you know, they say something that's remotely similar to what's being talked about, and then they post a link and say, click here, check this out. Those are pretty easy to spot, I would think. It would be more difficult in the, in the sense, especially as chatbots develop, where they're going to carry on you know, lengthy relationships, um, you know, build a rapport, potentially try and do complex things like identity theft and, and sending you malware. There might not, uh, the URL approach might not necessarily trans translate very well there. I'm sorry if I missed it, did you explain what the national security threat of bots is? Uh, there's not really any data on it. It's just a, uh, the potential threat is that uh, they can be used maliciously by uh, pretending to be human for, for periods of time. And uh, they've been used often in, in big larger chat rooms. It's uh, trick people to click on links or downloading malware and spam. And there's, a, there's a potential larger security threat in the sense that large numbers of bots could be dispatched as automated social engineering, you know, essentially spies that could work tirelessly at, at uh, collecting intelligence and conducting social engineering. Um, one, of the, one of the critiques we've talked about of, of uh, judging bots is that um, these kind of reasoning type questions are like, you know, what does the letter end look like using down or anything like that, this is like New York and so on. Right. Uh, but they are essentially kind of anti-social conversation style. And, uh, yeah. You know, if, I, if I was just having a ordinary conversation with you and I said, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you might not respond to an accurate response either. You might just say, that's a silly question. Sure. Why are you asking me that? Get lost, you know, something yeah. like that. 
So that's a, a usability concern for, for individuals trying to use this as a test. Uh, I think uh, one of the authors at the Digital Lit Review had mentioned, uh, it's called like the airplane test. Imagine sitting next to a stranger on an airplane, would you actually ask them this kind of question? Right. Most people probably not, but I can imagine uh, maybe a chat room administrator who needs to maybe verify that there aren't any bots in a room would feel comfortable enough to just pop in and go, I need to ask you a few questions. And then fire away. Oh, yeah, the Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, the type of caption. Uh, if anyone's interested, these are our citations for our work. Okay. Yes. What about bots which are assisted by humans? So, like when, when they play chess, right? The, there's typically also a few advisors sitting out. Um, you do have a couple of people sitting on this side who are helping uh, make the metrics move. What if someone's using a technology like Next AT and then there's the supervisor who is monitoring two more good conversations? And remember, long pauses are especially email based bots. It's, it's okay to take five minutes or ten minutes when you're not really certain. You might ask a question in the room, what you can use the tenants goal for. Yeah, that's true. I, I think to combat against that, um, quantitative metrics would be more useful. Um, because uh, in, if you're doing an active interrogation, a human could, could pop in and, and answer the questions really easily in place of the bot. And, and they do have CAPTCHAs. Um, we just mentioned CAPTCHAs. The major problem with CAPTCHAs is that when they run up against a problem, the bots run up against a problem they can't solve, but the problem will be handed off to a bank of human operators that can solve them and send a response back to the bot and then pops into the system. So I think there's yeah, the potential for a, a similar problem with, with this type of testing. Um, it certainly isn't going to probably catch every, every bot or every person trying to hack in, but they might be able to stop a few. Yeah, I just wanted to point out one thing that um, I mean, the Turing test really is not as inter interrogating out of entities that are from Paris. You have two of them there, you have to choose which of the two is the bot. So it's more than just, you know, just that looking at it, you have to say which of these two is the less, is the, the human, and which of these two is the computer. Okay. So, yeah, so it's a variant, roughly. I, I don't mean to say it is the Turing test. Well, I'm just saying, but, you know, it's, it's, that's, it's a very, the Turing test is a very, very powerful test and so on. I agree. Thank you so much. You're welcome.